Welcome back to the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. I'm Emma, and today we're tackling a really significant issue, the hidden connection between COVID-19, heart disease, and brain health. As the pandemic reshaped our understanding of health, one of the most important areas of focus is how COVID-19 can cause long-term cardiovascular complications, which are closely tied to brain health. This is more than just respiratory illness. It's a holistic challenge. You're absolutely right. This topic is critical because most people think of COVID-19 as something that impacts their lungs. But the effects on the heart and brain can be just as serious, if not more. We're learning more about how these systems are connected. And today, we'll explore what the research says, and most importantly, what we can do about it. Let's start by laying out the big picture. The COVID-19 pandemic has revealed a complex set of complications, especially around cardiovascular health. COVID-19 can lead to heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and coronary heart disease. What's really surprising, though, is how these conditions are linked to cognitive impairment and long-term neurological decline. That's right. And this is where the connection between the heart and brain becomes crucial. According to findings from the American Heart Association, Cardiovascular diseases like heart failure and atrial fibrillation increase the risk of cognitive decline and dementia. These aren't isolated problems. They're deeply intertwined. And we're talking about some serious statistics. For instance, studies show that anywhere between 14% and 81% of people with heart failure experience cognitive issues, everything from memory problems to challenges with language and decision-making. People with atrial fibrillation have a 39% higher risk of cognitive decline, and those with coronary heart disease have a 27% increased risk of dementia. It's alarming, but it shows just how important it is to manage heart health from an early age. The mechanisms here are complex. One major factor is blood flow. When the heart isn't pumping enough blood, it can reduce oxygen delivery to the brain, leading to silent strokes or gradual cognitive loss. And let's not forget inflammation. Chronic cardiovascular inflammation doesn't just damage the heart, it can also harm the blood-brain barrier, increasing the risk of neurodegenerative conditions. So taking care of your heart means protecting your brain too. Absolutely. This brings us to the impact of COVID-19 on cardiovascular health. One of the major developments has been the increase in cases of atrial fibrillation and flutter in COVID-19 patients. A study found that about 10.66% of people diagnosed with COVID-19 developed new-onset atrial arrhythmias. Even more concerning, 5.4% of these patients developed new-onset atrial fibrillation. COVID-19 doesn't just attack the lungs. It can cause significant damage to the heart as well. And remember, atrial fibrillation is linked to a higher risk of cognitive impairment, so it's all interconnected. Then there's the issue of long covid this term refers to the lingering symptoms people experience after recovering from the acute phase of the illness, and cardiovascular complications are a big part of that. Studies show that patients with long COVID often have ongoing heart issues like myocardial inflammation and arrhythmias. And this doesn't just affect their heart health. Long COVID can also lead to cognitive problems. People recovering from COVID-19 may face a heightened risk of cognitive impairment, likely because of the long-term cardiovascular damage. And research shows that COVID-19 can cause structural changes to the heart. For example, people who had COVID-19 often show an increased left ventricular mass and reduced global longitudinal strain. These changes indicate subclinical damage that could compromise heart function. When the heart's ability to pump blood efficiently is affected, it leads to reduced cerebral perfusion, meaning less blood and oxygen are getting to the brain. This can have long-lasting effects on cognitive health. So, what can we do? The first step is monitoring heart function, especially if you've had COVID-19. Early detection of cardiovascular issues can help prevent more serious complications down the road. Healthcare providers are increasingly using advanced imaging techniques to assess heart health after COVID-19. Now, Alex, there's an interesting dimension to this conversation that involves societal and political factors. COVID-19's health impacts have been shaped not just by medical factors, but also by political ones, especially in the U.S. Yes, this part is surprising to some, but crucial to understanding the full picture. Studies have shown a significant correlation between political polarization and health outcomes, particularly when it comes to COVID-19. States that predominantly voted Republican in the 2020 election, for example, 
had poorer health outcomes in areas like COVID-19 mortality and life expectancy. That's right. If states with lower vaccination rates, mainly Republican-leaning ones, had vaccination levels similar to those in Democratic-leaning states, it's estimated that around 72,000 COVID-related deaths could have been avoided. This points to a bigger issue of how political decisions directly influence public health measures like vaccination uptake and healthcare access. And let's not forget the healthcare disparities in these states. Republican-leaning areas have lower rates of health insurance coverage, which correlates with poorer health outcomes overall. Rural areas in particular are facing what's called maternity care deserts and other health care shortages. So addressing these societal and political factors is essential to improving health outcomes. Policymakers need to work toward equitable health care access for all, regardless of political context. This isn't just about one's voting record. It's about ensuring people have the care they need to stay healthy. That's critical because as new variants of COVID-19 emerge, understanding their cardiovascular impacts will be key to managing both heart and brain health. But it's not just about medical interventions. There are also holistic approaches. And that's where we get into the herbal remedies from the lost book of herbal remedies. Let's go through the core components. First up is hawthorn. This herb has been used for centuries to support cardiovascular health. It enhances coronary artery blood flow, improves cardiac function, and modulates blood pressure. Plus, its antioxidant properties help reduce oxidative stress, which is linked to cognitive decline. Then we have ginkgo biloba, which is well known for its ability to improve cognitive function. Ginkgo increases cerebral blood flow, enhances memory and concentration, and offers strong antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits that protect the brain's neurons. Next is turmeric with black pepper. Turmeric contains curcumin, a powerful anti-inflammatory compound. Black pepper boosts curcumin's bioavailability, making it more effective. Together, they help reduce inflammation in the cardiovascular system and support cognitive health. Another important addition is omega-3 fatty acids from algal oil. Omega-3s are essential for reducing inflammation in the body, supporting heart health, and maintaining brain function. Algal oil is a sustainable choice and avoids the potential contaminants found in fish oils. And we can't forget ashwagandha. It's an adaptogenic herb that reduces stress, which is a major contributor to both cardiovascular and cognitive issues. Lion's mane mushroom also supports nerve growth and cognitive function, making it a powerful tool for mitigating cognitive decline. Finally, green tea extract, standardized for EGCG, offers both cardiovascular and brain benefits. It supports healthy blood vessels and has been shown to protect brain health. And resveratrol, another strong antioxidant, helps protect the heart and brain from inflammation. But remember, it's important to consult with a healthcare provider before starting any new herbal regimen, especially if you're on medication. Herbs are powerful, but they need to be used safely and in conjunction with proper medical care. Exactly. It's about taking a holistic approach to your health. While conventional medicine is essential, these herbal remedies can provide additional support for both heart and brain health, especially in the aftermath of COVID-19. So, to sum up, COVID-19's impact on cardiovascular and brain health is significant, but there are ways to protect yourself. Monitor your heart health, take proactive steps for cognitive health, and consider integrating holistic remedies into your routine. That's it for today's episode of The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. For the full article, go to herbalbloom.org. We hope this information helps you better understand the connection between heart disease, brain health, and COVID-19. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.